Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Chaumont, and boy, do I have a rant for you today. But before I jump in, I want to say thank you to Ben Daniel from the Ben Daniel podcast for doing a review of one of our videos. It's greatly appreciated. Got much love for you. I watch your stuff all the time. Keep doing what you're doing, but thank you so much as it only helps our channel grow as you are a more established one than we are. And we are trying to do our best to continue to provide great content for our viewers and a real take on things because that's what I live by. And that's what I aim to do is always give a real perspective, not a, not a subjective, but an objective perspective on what's going on in all of professional sports but people today like to take on a side and surely we always take on sides in some capacity but i try to do it from a perspective of balancing both sides <clears throat> so thank you ben daniel Gr greatly appreciate you brother um for those of you who haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe ring that bell and follow us on facebook instagram and twitter and tiktok Let's just jump in right on this one. Caitlin Clark is not on the Olympic team. We all know this. Caitlin Clark was left off of the team for a variety of reasons. Ones that will never be publicly provided. Because if they ever did, it would make the people on that committee look really, really bad. Dawn Staley about two weeks ago, was asked the question, a week or two ago, was asked the question of by TMZ, who her rookie of the year would be. <clears throat> and she said, Angel, no doubt. Angel Reese, no doubt. I did a video on that. Blasting that nonsense. This was right before the All-Star break. Right, right before the All-Star game, I think it was. And if it was right before the All-Star game, and that's your response, and the same reason we are sitting here today not seeing Caitlin Clark play on the Olympic team, by the way, I think the women played today. I'm not sure. I, I think they're playing today, but I don't really care to watch it. Now Dawn Staley gets on, <laughs> gets on with Mike Tirico. And this is what she has to say about Caitlin Clark, the U.S. Women's Olympic team, and if Caitlin Clark should have been considered for the team. I'll let you listen to it. When, as, a, as a committee member, you're, you're charged with putting together best team. So let's talk about the best team. The best team does not include Caitlin Clark. Chelsea Gray was put on this team, yet she had not played a game the entire season. So how could Chelsea Gray be a part of the best team when she hasn't played? You've already destroyed your argument right there. Of, of players, the best talent. Um, Caitlin is... The best talent. See, at that point, like, what are we talking about? There's not a person on earth that can dispute who is more talented. She's the best passer in the WNBA. That is a talent. So she's more talented than every other passer. So how can you sit here and try to tell us that the best talent was the choice. Again, you destroyed your argument. It's just a rookie in the WNBA. Uh, wasn't playing bad, but wasn't playing like she's playing now. Like she's playing now. Okay, yes, she's playing phenomenally right now. But when you didn't choose her, she was the best statistical guard in the entire league across all stat measurables. These are facts. Now. It's not even close. So you're claiming she wasn't playing a certain level two months ago 
Yet that level was still better than everyone else in the damn league at her position. Miss me with the bullshit. If we had to do it all over again, the way that she's playing, um, she would be in really high consideration of making the team because she is playing head and shoulders above a lot of people. Should. I'm exhausted listening to Don Silly speak. Sure, whenever she speaks, I just want to feel like I'm listening to nails on a chalkboard. She was playing better than pretty much everyone on this team who plays her position two months ago. Now she's head and shoulders, and now she'd be under real consideration. So was she not under real consideration two months ago? I think what you just told us all is that she would be on the team now because you look so damn stupid with the arguments that you were using before that were bullshit then, that remain bullshit now, but you look so stupid now with her breaking all these records involving assists. Shooting the ball extremely well. I mean, she is an elite passer. Um, she's just got a great basketball IQ. And she had a great basketball IQ two months ago. She was a great passer two months ago, except her teammates were dropping the passes and fumbling them out of bounds which was costing her turnovers and negating her assists. On top of that, you said she's a great shooter. She's been shooting the ball really well. That's the one thing where you're so wrong. She hasn't shot the ball well. Her three-point shot has not been good. So she hasn't shot the ball well. She's made layups great. But her shooting from deep has not been great. So the one area that you speak of that she you say she was doing well that's the one area she wasn't doing well. Are you actually watching games, Don Staley? <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. In case you're wondering why my chair is so low, um, I'm having some chair difficulties. I'm ordering a new chair because this thing keeps on sinking to the ground, or maybe it's telling me that I'm too damn fat at this point. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's an older It's about six, seven years old, so I think it's um, time for a new chair. How do you respond to this dribble? How she was playing a couple months ago to how she's playing now. How she was playing a couple months ago was actually that she had better stats than literally every single guard that's on the Olympic team right now. That's how she was, that's how she was playing two months ago. She had better overall numbers. By that time, there, was, there were 12 games into the season for her. She had better overall stats than every single guard that's currently on the Olympic team right now. So tell me exactly how the hell she wasn't playing well enough two months ago, yet she had more assists, more rebounds, more, I mean, she was right there in steals. She was shooting at a higher free throw percentage. She's shooting at a pretty much the same field goal percentage. Her efficiency was a better, like every statistical category you could you could put on the on a, on a board. And I had a graphic, but I don't know what the hell happened to the graphic. But there's a graphic that I've got where you literally list down every freaking stat. And Caitlin Clark, two months ago, overall, was better than all of them, all of them. But she was too young. She was not physical enough. There was a bunch of different freaking reasons made up for the nonsense. And now, and now, she's playing head and shoulders above the competition. That's what Don Staley just said. Head and shoulders. This is why I, I just can't take the... So if she's head and shoulders, okay, let's go back. Head and shoulders. So she's head and shoulders better than everyone else, or most people, but definitely head and shoulders better than every single guard in that roster. Her numbers are fairly the same. Truth. You don't like truth? Truth. Truth. She might be averaging a half a point more per game. She's averaging more assists because she's going in that run of assists. So instead of averaging 6.3, 6 6.4, she's averaging 8.2 assists now per game. She leads the WNBA in assists. She set the WNBA record in assists. She had a triple-double during that period of time. But she was still top four in the WNBA when the Olympic team was announced. Better than everyone on that list. <laughs> 
her shooting percentage is largely the same, 39%, 40%. It's, it's gone between 37, 38, 39, 40%. But 40% right now, just about there. Turnovers have gone down. But Dawn Staley, you'd think with the knowledge that she supposedly has as a basketball expert, would know that the turnovers that she had in large part were because of how she's being defended and how that her teammates couldn't catch a pass. So she's playing head and shoulders. She w- I, these things are hard to make up. It's it's almost la- it's laughable. It's laughable. It's laughable. At this point, what you just got on a, now you're on TV and saying she would be highly in consideration. So what, was she not highly in consideration two months ago? Here, better yet, a week and a half ago, you said, you said, Dawn, you said it. I didn't say it. I'll link our video to it. You said you would have Angel Reese as the rookie of the year. But you just said Caitlin Clark is playing head and shoulders above them. So how would you have Angel Reese as rookie of the year? This is the type of stuff that just makes it so hard to watch. It's so hard to listen to. And this is why they, they can say what they want, but the truth is the truth. They don't like the little, they don't like the lily white girl who's straight. They don't like to have the young girl come in here and take over their league. They're jealous as shit of her. They have a problem with her because they don't think she's earned her stripes. They have a problem with her because she's drawn all the attention. And the problem includes the individuals on this committee. I guarantee you, if, if Caitlin Clark was a lesbian, she'd be on the team right now. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. People might say that's a, that's a, that's a really hard line to stand, stand on. If she were a lesbian, she'd be on the team. There's not a doubt in my mind. I know that not all the women on the team are lesbians, but if she were, she'd be on the team. They, they did everything they could to keep her off it. And you know what? Good for her. Because you know what you just did? Remember when she said you woke up but you woke up a you, you woke up a monster? That first game after didn't look too good for her, but since then, yeah, they woke up a monster. Since that happened, she's been absolutely on a tear. A tear. Setting, I think she set, I read somewhere 29 WNBA records in a month. I can't confirm it. I read it somewhere on one of these one of these different posts true or not i know she set a, a number of wnba records but now you know what she's getting to do she's getting a rest she's resting she's chilling out she's off her feet she hasn't had a break since last october and she's going to come back with plenty of juice and gas when they hit the court back middle of august But Don Staley, you've been outed again for the fraud you are, for the fake you are, for the phony you are. I have a great deal of respect for Don Staley's career as a coach. She's turned around. A pro- she's made South Carolina an elite program. But she is, when she was said last year, Caitlin's one of the goats of the game. That's such nonsense. We, Caitlin Clark is the best college basketball player of the last quarter century. Her impact on college basketball is far beyond any impact of any college women's basketball player in the history of the game, the history of the game, her impact in three months in the WNBA has changed the WNBA as a league. Caitlin Clark is going to finish in the top five in MVP voting. Mark it down. I would say she probably finishes second behind Asia Wilson. <clears throat> She's going to win the win the rookie of the year in a landslide. In a landslide. But for you to come on here and think people are stupid. You guys kept her off there because you don't like her, because you don't you want to teach this girl a lesson. You want to show her you are you haven't earned it enough. You haven't been here yet. 
despite the fact that Diana Taurasi was on the Olympic team as a rookie. Uh, Candace Parker was on the Olympic team as a rookie. Like, uh, I know there was one more. But it wasn't like this was not, this was there wasn't a precedent before this that a rookie could make the WMB make the Olympic team. But you guys are a trip, man. You made up excuses. You made up reasons. A week and a half ago, Angel Reese is the is the rookie of the year for you. Yet a week and a half later, they haven't played a game since, and Caitlin Clark is playing head and shoulders above the Olympic team players. Caitlin Clark. Being held off of the Olympic team was criminal in nature. Criminal in nature. It was an embarrassment. And it showed such an outrageous bias that you would claim that she didn't go to practice while she was preparing for the Final Four. Yet at the same time, Chelsea Gray wasn't at that practice because she was injured. And Chelsea Gray, this season's averaging seven points and four and a half rebounds a game. I'll argue that Caitlin Clark should be the is the be, I argue, I still argue, Caitlin Clark is the best point guard in the WNBA. She's the best guard in the WNBA. And Enrique Gumbuale is the best shooting guard. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. If you look at all of the guards currently on this Olympic team, Diana Taurasi, is she the best player on her team? No. <laughs> Jewel Lloyd, is she the best player on her team? Yes. What is she shooting from the field? 37%. When she made the team, she was shooting 33.4%. Around there. She was under 34%. Kelsey Plum, is she the best player on her team? No. Jackie Young, is she the best player on her team? No. Chelsea Gray, is she the best player on her team? No. Sabrina Ionescu, is she the best player on her team? No. So none of the guards that are on this team are the best player on their team. They're not relied upon to do everything. They're not relied upon to set up the offense, to score, to make the team run. Kaylin Clark is the best player on her team. She's the point guard. She's the best shooting guard. Yet she can never get an open look because her teammates don't set proper screens for her to get open looks. But she's the best point guard and shooting guard on her team. She's the best player on her team. She's the best passer on her team. She's the best scorer on her team, realistically. She just doesn't take enough shots to lead the team in scoring right now. Although she might lead him right now. Although she might be leading now. But Caitlin Clark has to do it all for her team to have a chance to win. Those other players don't have to do that. Uh, I mean, you can, you can flip it a thousand different ways. Dawn Staley's full of shit. We know this. She's been exposed for being full of shit. And she can get on here and say, yeah, we'd have to put together the best team, the best talent, blah, 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 blah. That's all nonsense. It all sounds cute. Fact of the matter is, Don Staley was largely responsible for this woman not making the Olympic team and is now coming back to trying to save her face and say, well, you know, two months ago she wasn't playing as well. Bullshit. She was still the best guard at the time, and her numbers backed it up. Her data backed it up. Fuck team record. She was playing on the worst team in the league. And yet she was still doing what she was doing. And once her teammates finally learned how to play with her and catch the damn ball, and Aaliyah Boston started understanding that this girl will make me a star, what did you start seeing happen? They started winning. They were 10-7, and seven, I think, something like that, after they started off 1-8. and eight. And Aaliyah Boston started bawling because she was getting layup drills from Caitlin Clark. But you sit here with a narrative that you want to sit with and say, ah, she'd be highly, uh, highly under consideration because she's playing head and shoulders. Yet a week and a half ago, Angel Reese is your rookie of the year, and we ain't played a game since. I tell you, folks, it's the same shit, just a different day. It's the same, same tune, just said in a bunch of different words. 
These people, these individuals who don't like Caitlin Clark just don't like Caitlin Clark because they're jealous fucking haters of her. They cannot stand the fact that she's just that much better than everybody else. It's not just that she's being followed. It's that she's better than them. The only player in this league that I can sit here and say is probably better than Caitlin Clark right now is Asia Wilson. That's it. No one else. And skill for skill, Caitlin Clark's got more skill than Asia Wilson. Caitlin Clark's the most skilled player in the WNBA. And once she gets a year under her belt and then the 10 pounds on her body from weight room stuff, Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark will be the best player in the WNBA. She will be. It's just a matter of time, whether it's a year from now or two years from now, but she will be within the next two years. Because the things that they're able to do to her right now, physically, because they say, you know, she's not physical enough, the things they can do to her physically because she doesn't have enough muscle yet, you're going to see when she does because she's doing all this stuff without that muscle right now. Yeah. And God, let, God forbid you get a player that actually understands how Caitlin Clark truly plays. And God forbid you get a player who she can actually rely on, on the perimeter, which will, won't force double teams every single time she's touching the ball 60 feet from the rim, 70 feet from the rim. Bro. <laughs> Bro. It'll be trouble, 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 trouble for the rest of these women. The fact is they all just dislike her because they wish because she's getting the pub that and, and, and the adulation and, and the following that they dream of having. But the reality is the reason she's got it is because she fucking earned it. And all y'all can hate is y'all all y'all can eat a dick on that one, man. I got nothing left. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, ring that bell. Come on now.